1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. It is written, chapter 5, verse 18. Oh, you go from left to right, right to left? Oh, yeah. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Many Christians today, they don't know what God's will is for their life. We get into Jesus Christ, we become reconciled to God. And Christians want to know what is God's will for their life? What does God want me to do? Why did God create me? Why am I still on this earth? The Bible tells us God's will. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It is God's will for you to give thanks. If you're in Jesus Christ. And if we don't do so, we get out of the will of God. I'll give you an example. In 1998, my, uh, my wife and I came back to Thailand. We were born again in 1995. In 1996, we went to America. And it was a nice time. Preaching all over America. We were in Hawaii. Very beautiful place. Yeah. Many churches. Many Christians. And because we came from Thailand. All the churches and Christians were interested in us. But we knew we had to come back to Thailand. And in 1998, we came back to Thailand. We went to Pattaya, which is a very bad place, to preach the gospel. There was a church in Pattaya. They let us stay at their church. The person that founded the church was so happy. Finally, somebody has come to preach the gospel. You see, in Thailand, it's 99% non Christian. And not even one half a percent is Christian. But missionaries come here. They don't go to the 99%. They focus on the half percent. 
लेकिन वो सिर्फ फोकस करते हैं उस एक बचे हुए and Christians in Thailand go from one church to the next depending on where the missionaries are while 99% are going to hell so finally this founder of this church was happy that somebody had come to preach to the 99% जो उस चर्च का रहनुमा था रेफर था जिसने उस चर्च को बनाने वाले थे वो खुश हुए कि आखिर कोई ऐसा आया है जो 99% के पास जाना था एंड दे लेट अस स्टे द चर्च और उन्होंने हमें चर्च में रहने के लिए जगह दी द फाउंडर ऑफ दैट चर्च उस चर्च का जो बानी था वेंट टू अमेरिका फॉर व्हाइल वो कुछ वक्त के लिए अरसा के लिए अमेरिका चला गया लेट अस स्टे इन दिस चर्च और उसने हमें कहा कि आप किसी चर्च में ठहरिए सो एवरी नाइट वी वर नॉट प्रीचिंग द गॉस्पल और हर रात हमें जाना होता था और हमें प्लामेंट पाठ की तरीफ देनी होती थी। And when you preach the gospel, जब आप प्लामेंट पत्तस की मुनादी करते हैं, to the world, दुनिया को, it is a guarantee, ये इस बात की तस्दीक और गारंटी है, you will be persecuted, आपके ऊपर जुर्मों से तंग होगा। And in Pattaya, Thailand, और पता है थाईलैंड के अंदर क्या हुआ? Like most of Thailand. The streets are controlled by mafia, by gangs. जो गलियाँ कुचे बाजार हैं वो माफिया और गैंग्स के कंट्रोल में हैं। And as we preach the gospel on the streets, हम लाइन पर दस की बनाते हैं और ये देख गलियों में, we come in confrontation with gangs. और हमारा बहुत बफ़ा ऐसा हुआ है कि वो फिर गैंग्स के साथ तसादम हो जाता है। And as we preach the gospel. जैसे ही हम प्लामेंट पुदस की तालीम देते हैं, they sent hitmen, killers to the church. और जैसे ही मैंने क्लाम की मुलाकात शुरू की, तो उन्होंने मुझे मारने की कोशिश की, मुझे हिट करने की कोशिश की. To show the church people their guns. जो उन्होंने चर्च के लोगों को अपनी गन्स दिखाई. And to threaten them that they're going to kill them if they did not get rid of us. और उन्होंने ये sorry. चर्च के लोगों ने उन्हें बंदूकें दिखाई कि अगर आपने इनको ना छोड़ा और ना जाने दिया तो हम आपको कत्ल कर देंगे। They didn't come to us। वो हमारे पास ना आए। You see, God is with us। देखिए क्योंकि प्राण हमारे साथ। And out on the streets, they're too afraid to confront us। Even कि हम गलियों में होते हैं, बाजारों में होते हैं, तो प्राण हमारे साथ। The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion। रास्पास वो है जो शेर की तरह से ना। And the wicked flee the no man pursueth। और जो दबावाज़ होते हैं, कमजोर होते हैं, वो हवा की तरह उठ जाते हैं। So they went after the church people. जब वो चर्च के लोगों के पास आए, and they got very scared. और वो बहुत ही डर गए, बहुत ज़्यादा हुए। But they couldn't just kick us out. और उन्होंने उनको धक्के मार के बाहर ना निकाला। Because that would look bad for them. क्योंकि मैं उनके लिए बुरा था। So they started playing games. उन्होंने उनके साथ खेल खेलना शुर they stopped supplying the water. उन्होंने उनको पानी मुहैया करना बंद कर दिया चर्च को. They stopped supplying the food. उन्होंने उनको खाना अंदर जाना बंद कर दिया. Playing games with us. उन्होंने हमारे साथ खेल खेलना शुरू कर दिया. Hoping that we would leave. उन्होंने ये उम्मीद की शायद हम इसको छोड़ के चले जाएं. However, ताहम, we did not come there to eat or drink. और हम इसलिए वहाँ पे नहीं थे कि पीएं और खाएं. We were there to preach the gospel. Whether we eat or drink does not matter to us. Preaching the gospel is what matters to us. The food finished. The water finished. And then our money finished. But we continue to preach the gospel. Where we preach that was far away from where we're staying. जिस जगह पे हम मुनादी कर रहे थे वो हमारी उस जगह से काफी दूर था जहां हम रुके हुए थे। But when we have money, we take the bus, so it's very quick. अगर जब हमारे पास पैसे होते हम बस पकड़ते और चले जाते ताकि जल्दी से पहुंच सकें। But now with no money, we've got to walk. बगैर पैसे के हमें वहाँ से पैदल चल के जाना पड़ता है। Three hours, तीन घंटे। To get to where we're gonna preach। उस जगह से जाना, तीन घंटे में जाना और तीन में आना। No money, बगैर पैसे के। No water, ना पानी। No food, ना खाने के लिए। Three hours walking, 
तीन घंटे चलते रहना एक कड़ी कड़क धूप में we get to where we preach हमने मुनादि करनी थी we preach the gospel हमने प्रामाणिक पदस की मुनादि की and now we must walk back अब हमें पैदल चल के वापस आना था no money बगैर पैसे no water बगैर पानी no food ना ही कुछ खाए बगैर three hours walking back तीन घंटे चल के वापस आना as we're walking back जैसे ही हम वापस अपनी मंजिल we know a Christian sister who sells noodles at night हमने एक उसी बहन को देखा है जो नूडल्स रात के वक्त बेच रही थी। We never asked for money। हमने उसे कभी पैसा ना मांगा। We never asked for food। हमने उसे कभी कोई खाना ना मांगा। The Bible says the righteous are not forsaken। क्रमें को दस में लिखा है कि रास बास कभी भी मुश्किल में तंगी में नहीं पड़े। Psalm 37, Zubur, verse 25. I have been young and now am old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. मैं जवान था और बुरा हूँ, तो भी मैंने साधक को देखकर और उसकी उदात को टुकड़े मारते नहीं देखा। However, this Christian sister, ये उसी ही बहन, had offered us many times. उसने हमें बहुत दफा इस बात के लिए if we're ever in her neighborhood, कभी भी उसके पड़ोस में रहते हुए, to come see her, उसको जाने के देखें, and she would bless us with noodles. और उसने हमें noodles खिला के बरकत पाई. So now that we're walking, अब हम पैदल जा रहे थे, we happen to be in her neighborhood. हम एक पड़ोस में एक अच्छे हमें पड़ोसी मिल गए. When she saw us, जब भी उसने हमें देखा, she was very happy. Had us sit down. हम वहाँ उसके साथ बैठे. Served us noodles. हमें noodles खाने को मिले. Water. पानी. Very important the water. पानी जो बहुत अहम था. And I ate two bowls of noodles. मैंने दो bowls of noodles बनाए. And many glasses of water. और बहुत सारे glass मैंने पानी के. Very thirsty. बहुत ही प्यासा था. I thought in my mind. मैंने अपने ज़िन में ये सोचा. Maybe God will speak to her. मैंने ये ख्याल किया कि शायद उदाहरण उससे बोला है जो ब्लेस अस विच 20 बात कि हमें 20 बास बात वो दे 10 बार इच फॉर द बास दस एक के लिए कि हम बस पकड़े और वहाँ चले एंड देन वी कैन टेक द बास सो ताकि हम बस लें और वापस चले आई डिड नॉट सेनी थिंग आई जस्ट थॉट अबाउट इट मैंने ये बस ख्याल करना शुरू किया we told her it's time for us to leave. We told her it's time for us to go. And as I stood up, my legs now were sore. You see, when I walked three hours, no problem, I was walking. And then when I was preaching, there's no problems, I'm preaching. और मुझे कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं थी जब मैं कलाम करूं। But now that I sat down, जब मैं बैठा हूं, to eat, खाने के लिए, and get up, जब खड़ा हुआ, now my body is tired, मेरा जिस्म जो अपूरा है वो थक चुका है, and very sore, और बहुत ही तकलीफ दे रही है। She did not feed us rice, उसका वहाँ पे नतीजा था, no chapati, not chapati. चपाती नहीं थी। Noodles, noodles थे उसके पास। And they get big in your stomach. Noodles they expand in your stomach. और जो noodles होते हैं वो आपके stomach के अंदर फैल जाते हैं। And I had drank lots of water. मैं बहुत सारे पानी glass पिया वहाँ। And ate two bowls of noodles. मैंने दो bowls जो noodles खा लिए। So now my stomach, the noodles have expanded. और जो noodles के अंदर फैल गए। So I'm very sleepy now. और उस वक्त मुझे बहुत ही नींद आई। And very tired। और बहुत ही थक चुका था। And we said goodbye to her। तब हमने उसको खुदा से कहा। God did not speak to her। खुदा से नहीं कहा। So we must start walking। हमने चलना शुरू कर दिया। My feet are tired। मेरे जो पैर थे। My legs are tired। मेरी टांगें थक चुकी हैं। I have a stomach ache। मेरे पेट स्टमक में दर्द हुई। And now it starts raining on us। अब वहाँ बारिश शुरू हो गई हमारे ऊपर। We had no umbrella with us। हमारे पास छतरी नहीं थी। We had nowhere to go from the rain। अब हमारे पास कोई मंजिल नहीं थी कि कहाँ हम जाएँ। So now we're tired। 
हम थक चुके थे and getting very wet और हम बहुत ही भीग चुके थे and because of our glasses क्योंकि मैंने चश्मा लगाया हुआ था the rain is getting my glasses wet और जो बारिश के पानी था वो मेरी चश्मे को भी बोल रहा था and as I'm walking जैसे ही मैं चल रहा था I begin to complain मैंने शिकायत करना शुरू कर दिया first Corinthians chapter ten verse ten First Corinthians chapter ten verse ten that is written, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. क्योंकि कहते हैं कि उसके कट को अलबत्ता मोसर और जबरदस्त हैं, लेकिन जब वो खुद मजबूत होता है तो कमजोर सा मालूम होता है। So I begin. So I began complaining. And as I complained, I become more tired and more weak. And finally, in front of a temple, they had a bus stop with a roof. They had a bus stop and a roof. ऊपर की तरफ जो था एक बस स्टॉप था। So I went to the bus stop। मैं बस स्टॉप की तरफ गया। And I just lay down tired। मैं लेट गया थक के। I had been complaining। और फिर मैं शिकायत करना शुरू हो गया। Why God? मैंने कहा क्यों कलाम? I'm preaching the gospel। मैं तेरे पास कलाम की नादी कर रहा हूँ। Why is it like this for? कि ये क्यों मेरे साथ ऐसा हो रहा है? Back when I was a boxer। When I was a boxer। जब मैं बॉक्सर था। I had money। it was not hard like this. This is harder than boxing. As I see the cars drive by. All sinners. Why do they have cars? Why I a preacher here on the street? I gave up and lay down. If I could have died, I would have died. But I was too tired to die. So as I laid down at the bus stop, the Holy Spirit brought scriptures back to my mind. I read the Bible every day. In one month, I read from Genesis to Revelation. That's Twelve times in one year. Every time I read the Bible, it's a brand new book. It's a brand new book. Even reading it twelve times a year. I learn something new every day. The more I learn the Bible, the more I learn how little I know. But I read the Bible every day. Do I understand the Bible? Sometimes I read, I don't understand. But I read it every day. It's food for our soul. When I eat food, I might not know how to cook the food. But I eat it anyways. And though I may not know what I'm eating, it still blesses my body. Same with the Bible. I read through every day. I might not understand everything, but it blesses my soul when I read the Bible. When you read the Bible every day, the Holy Spirit has God's Word to work with with you. You see, the Holy Spirit does not speak on His own. 
آپ یہ دیکھیں کہ قرآن کا جو پاک روح ہے وہ خود سے کام نہیں کرتا the holy spirit only speaks in line with the bible قرآن کا جو پاک روح ہے وہ کلام مقدس میں سے ہو کے بولتا ہے if you don't know the bible اگر آپ کلام مقدس کو نہیں جانتے you will not hear from the holy spirit آپ پاک روح میں سے نہیں سن سکتے but if you know the bible اگر آپ جانتے ہیں کلام مقدس the holy spirit now can speak to you تب قرآن کا پاک روح آپ سے بول سکتا ہے as i was laying down this bus stop جیسے ہی میں بس ٹاپ پہ لیٹا ہوں i had been complaining میں شکایات کر رہا تھا i was tired I was wet. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me. From the book of Revelation. About the new Jerusalem. Streets. Streets are made of gold. People on this earth. They kill each other for gold. I saw a video clip of a Thai pastor asking for money for Pakistani refugees. But on his finger, he had a gold ring with chain. Why is he asking for money when he can sell that and give to people? People will sell their soul for gold on this earth. Just a gold ring. They will lie to people to make money. They will sell their soul for a little bit of gold. But in heaven, in the new Jerusalem, the streets are made of gold. The gates are made of diamond. Or the walls are made of diamond, the gates are made of pearl. There's no sickness. There's no death. There's no night time. There's no darkness. And I'm going there when I die. Why am I going to heaven when I die? Nothing special about me. I used to be a sinner. I used to hurt people before. I used to steal from people. I used to get drunk. And fornicate. Fornicate. Sin. Sex. Sin. But me is going to go to heaven when I die because of Jesus. And I'm going to go to a place where the streets are made of gold. Where there's no more suffering. No more sickness. Not because I'm worthy. All because of Jesus. And if Jesus can save me, who is worthy of hell, I am worthy of hell. He can save anybody. And I have to tell people. Why am I laying down? I got up. What am I complaining about? I'm going to heaven when I die. In a very short time. We're only on this earth for a short time. Five more years we'll be here. Ten years we'll be here. We're only here for a short time. And we're going to go to heaven when we die. Because of Jesus. So I got up. I told my wife. What the scripture says about heaven. Where we're going when we die. As the Holy Spirit was bringing back to my remembrance, 
From the book of Revelation, what heaven is like, we got back up. Though my legs are tired, I feel good about that. They're tired because I've been preaching the gospel. I was happy now, tired and walking. My clothes were wet. It was now a blessing to have wet clothes. They're wet because of the gospel. We're walking. Cars are driving by us. Water splashing us from the road. I'm happy for that. I'm going to go to heaven when I die. And though I'm wet and tired, I feel sorry for the people in the cars now. Because most of them, if not all of them, are going to go to hell when they die. We keep on walking. We're now praising the Lord. In everything, give thanks. We're praising the Lord because we're saved. We're praising the Lord because our names are written in the book of life. We're going to go to heaven when we die. People driving by might laugh at us walking on the streets. It doesn't offend us. It does not offend us. Because we're going to go to heaven we die. Could you imagine if you're on an airplane? And the captain tells you the airplane's going to crash. You need a parachute. You put the parachute on. It's heavy. Would you complain about that? No, because that's going to save your life. People might laugh at you. Look at the crazy guy with the parachute. That won't offend you. That won't make you feel bad. Because that parachute is going to save your life. As we're walking down the street, we can rejoice because we're going to get to heaven when we die because of Jesus. As we're walking, smiling and happy now, praising the Lord, we pass a truck. We're in a very dark area. There should be nobody walking in this area. Only my wife and I. And we pass this truck. The windows are dark so you cannot see inside. As we pass this truck, I think it's empty. But as we're walking past the truck, my wife tells me she perceives there's something bad in this truck. I think, I think the truck is empty. So I'm thinking spirits. It's light at night. One in the morning. One o'clock in the morning. It's very dark. There's a truck. I think it's empty. My wife says she perceives something's wrong with this truck. So I'm thinking devils. Evil spirits. So I tell my wife, let's pray for this truck. As we begin praying, the truck door opens. And a woman jumps out with long hair. 
I almost started to run away. I thought the truck was empty. And this woman jumps out. I thought it was a devil. I almost started running. But it was a woman. When she jumped out of the truck, a man jumped out after her. And she begins walking. The truck door is open. The truck starts moving slowly. And the man that jumped out is trying to push her back in the truck. Now I am a man. 100% man. I am so much of a man. People get mad at me all the time. In America, I have been kicked out of a bus. Why did they kick him a bus for? I was telling somebody how it's a curse when women are in leadership. And the whole bus got so mad at me in America. They threw me out of the bus. I am a man. Because I'm a man. If anybody harms women or children. I will harm you. Now if you harm me. I'll turn the other cheek. I'll bless you. But if somebody touches a child, I will lay hands upon them. <laughs> and so this young woman, the truck was driving, so there has to be somebody driving the truck. There's a man pushing her. That's two men. And there's hands coming out of the truck trying to grab her. That is three men. One girl. Hands are going this way. I tell my wife, pray. I'm going to go take care of this. So I begin to run after them. While I'm running after them, I see everything that happens. The girl, as the man was trying to push her in the truck, some other man was trying to grab her from the truck, she stepped backwards to run away. But she had long hair. And that man grabbed her by the hair, pulled on her hair. She went to the ground. And they began pulling on her hair. My heart is beating very fast. I am getting very angry while I am running. And I'm trying to get to them as fast as I can. She continues to fight with the man, pulling her head away from him. The man keeps pulling on her hair. As hair comes out of her head, she breaks free from the man, runs into the middle of the road. It had just been raining. The roads are very wet. And as she runs into the middle of the road, another truck almost hits her. They have to put on the brake very hard. And it makes a very loud screeching sound. She opens the passenger door. Jumps in on a woman's lap. 
tells the mail driver, the man driver, to go. He does not go. He's a Buddhist. Buddhists are passive. They don't get involved in any of those problems. They believe in karma. If something bad happens to you, it's because you're a bad person. And they don't help you when bad things are happening to you. Just like you experience here now in Thailand. You thought you came to a nice country. But you come here in problems, the Thai people don't help you. They are Buddhist. They believe in karma. And if something bad is happening to you, they think you must be a bad person. And they will not help. This man didn't do anything. The other man who had been grabbing her hair, he walked to that truck like a gangster. Opened the door, grabbed her hair to pull her out of the truck. I had been running. My heart had been beating fast. My face became very red. If you see my face turn red, watch out. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> when my face gets red, somebody's going to get hurt. As I was running, and my heart was beating fast, I forgot to stop running. To stop so I ran right into that man. <laughs> we both fell to the ground. I jumped up. He jumps up. And he tells me in Thai, you don't know her. It says Buddhist talk. That means she's a bad girl. That means stay out of this. That means don't get involved in karma here. He says to me, you don't know her. I took my finger. I pointed right at the idol on his neck. The idol of the Buddha on his neck. And I said, I know you. You're going to go to hell when you die. He says, I don't want to hear this. And he walks away. But from that truck, another man comes running. But he has an axe in his hand. And he's running at me. And I'm watching him come towards me. I just been thinking about heaven. Now because I believe in Jesus, I know I'm going to go to heaven when I die. The Bible says in 1 John 5.13, 1 John 5.13, First John 5.13 These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. First John 5.13 I know I'm going to go to heaven when I die. But now it's how do I get to heaven? I don't want to go to heaven because I'm sick. No, I want to go to heaven as a martyr. Can you imagine in heaven? 
Who is there right now? The Apostle Paul. With his head chopped off. And his head chopped off. The Apostle Thomas. Who is stabbed with spears in his back. The Apostle Peter. Who is crucified upside down. And when we go to heaven, would it be a blessing to have been killed down here too? Because that's who's up there in heaven. Martyrs for Jesus. So as this man is running me the axe, has the man come at me with an axe? I was just thinking about heaven. I've been praising God because I'm good at heaven. And now there's a man with an axe coming at me. I started to smile. I thought this is the opportunity. Praise the Lord. Not only am I going to heaven, I'm going to go as a martyr. As he was running at me, I thought, why would I die preaching? I didn't have time to get a sermon ready. He's right here already. So I said, in Jesus' name. He stops. The axe is right here. And I am watching him fighting. But I do not see anybody's hand. And he is having a struggle. It's like somebody is holding his hand. And I'm trying to figure this out. What happened? What's wrong with the guy? How is this happening? Somebody pushes me out of the way. It's my wife. There's an axe right here. And my wife is now in front of me. She pushed me out of the way. And she begins preaching to him in time. It is appointed unto men once said I, but after this the judgment. You're going to go to hell when you die. You need to repent. And believe on Jesus. He says, Jesus. His hand is free. I don't care about Jesus. He takes his axe. He hits the truck the girl is in. Hits the windshield. And in one strike. The whole windshield explodes. I was amazed. I did not know you could do that with an axe. I did not know you could do that. I thought you hit it and you put a hole in there. The whole windshield exploded. And then they walked away. The owner of that truck, the Buddhist passive man who did not want to get involved, starts yelling at me that I must pay for his windshield. Because according to Buddhism, I have entered fear with karma. Karma, their belief. And because I got involved, his windshield is broken. He didn't blame the man that had the axe. He blamed me. I told him. That's the man that did it. You can write his license plate down. I will go with you to the police station. You can file a complaint. He says, yes, I'm going to the police station. And you're coming with me. 
and he took me to the police station. So my wife and I got in the back of that truck. Unbelievable how sissy Buddhists are. Buddhists are not men. Buddha was not a man. Look at the statues. He has no muscle. He is growing breast. He is effeminate. He is in between a man and a woman. He is a sissy. And all of these Buddhists, they have become sissies. So this Buddhist sissy wants to take me to the police station. My wife and I get in the back seat of the get in the back of the truck. And the girl gets back there with us. We begin preaching the gospel to her. And she tells us her story. She was 20 years old at the time. She had a boyfriend in Belgium. He was working the same money. The same money. And come back to marry her. And take her to Belgium. Well, as a Buddhist, she knows there's no Buddhist temples in Belgium. And in Buddhism, they need temples. In Christianity, we need no temples. We are the temple. We can meet anywhere. Meet anywhere. We can serve the Lord anywhere. But Buddhists must go to a temple to serve their God. And because there's no temples in Belgium, she went to the Buddhist temple every day. She was a young girl. 20 years old. The temple is full of monks. They cannot touch women. They wear robes. They have no underwear on. They cannot have erections. They must meditate and focus and always stay small. It's a rule for Buddhist monks. It's their rule. Yeah, they cannot think about women. They cannot touch women. And they cannot have erections. When this 20 year old girl came into the temple, the monks could not control themselves. And because they wear no underwear, naturally things happen. And the abbot of the temple is now very mad. Not at the monks. Because they're perverts. Man and the young girl. Why does she keep coming to my temple for? So he hired gangsters. To rape and kill her. And these gangsters thought they were doing a mission for their god Buddha. That's why the man was saying, you don't know her. That's why they were so bold. They were on a mission that the abbot had set them on. So this girl, she clearly saw God is not in the Buddhist temple. But who saved her life? Christians. And as we preached to her, 
Of course she believed. We get to the police station. The police take me aside. They tell me that I must pay 5,000 baht. Because according to Thai law, because of Buddhism, if you help somebody, you must pay for all the damages. So if you get an accident, and I take you to the hospital, I have to pay for your hospital bill. That's why nobody helps each other here in Thailand. That's why if you get into an accident, everybody just stands and looks at you. Until the authorities come and do something. But they won't help you. Because according to Thai law, they have to pay for everything. And because I help this girl, According to Thai law, I have to pay for the damages that man struck. If I do not, I will have to go to jail. I tell the policeman I do not have 5,000 baht. I do not even have one baht. He didn't believe me. So he kept trying to encourage me to pay the money. I kept trying to tell him I don't have that money. While this was going on, the young girl called her mother. This was in 1998. People didn't have mobile phones then. So she called her mother from the police station. Her mother was so happy. Because she had been missing for hours. She comes to the police station. And she pays the 5,000 baht for me because she's so happy her daughter's alive. And then they gave us a ride back to the church for saying that. And then they gave us a ride to the church. And we preached to the mother. And just like the daughter, she saw God is not in the Buddhist temple. Christians saved her daughter's life. So she believed in Jesus. We got home. We took a shower. We prayed together. Read our Bibles. And went to sleep. Maybe about 4 in the morning. At 7 o'clock in the morning, somebody starts banging on my door. I just woke up. I was so sleepy. I think the gangsters have fallen They're going to kill me now. So I opened the door. And it was the Christian sister who gave us news. She started yelling at me. She said, Tony, I don't know what you did last night. But God had me pray for you all night long. She said, I have not slept last night. She pulled out her pocket 500 baht. He said, here, and God told me to give this to you too. And then she said, I'm going to sleep and left. I have thought maybe she'll bless us with 20 baht. And God did even more than I thought. 500 baht. And then I realized, what if I had never started giving things? What if I did not start giving things? At that bus stop, what if I just kept complaining and slept at the bus stop? That young girl went to hell. We never got blessed. 
And we've been in a miserable situation. And would never have gotten out of it. But when we started thanking the Lord, we started praising God. Our clothes were wet. Our legs were tired. We had no money. No food, no water. But we started praising God. Because we're saved. We're going to go to heaven when we die. When we started praising God, we were in the will of God. And was able to save that person's life from being murdered and then going to hell. And I learned in 1998 the most important lesson to be in the will of God You've got to praise the Lord. If you're a Christian, if you're in Christ, then you have eternal life. The Bible says we can know we have eternal life. When you know you have eternal life, you have something to praise God for. No matter what we go through in this world, and we all will grow through hardships. The Bible says we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. If you're a Christian in the world, whether in Europe, America, Asia, India, wherever you are, you will go through tribulation. You will have hard times in this world. But in those hard times, we can praise God. Because we're only here for a short time. And then we'll be in heaven forever. And when we praise God, we're now in the will of God. And everything works out according to God's will. Now I understood why God did not bless us that night. Why we had to walk that night. Why God didn't touch that sister's heart. Now it all made sense. So that one girl could get saved. When we praise God, everything just falls into place according to God's will. So let us praise the Lord in everything. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word as faith cometh by hearing and hearing by Thy Word. We pray that our faith may be increased that may be exhorted in the faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.